with a physical vapor process known as sputtering. In a sputtering system, a target of the material to be deposited is placed near the wafers. An inert gas such as argon is bled into the vacuum chamber at very low pressure. The application of a large electric field ionizes the argon. The positively charged argon ions attracted to the negative bias bombard the target and dislodge atoms. In sputtering, the atoms leave in a wide range of directions. The result is a good coverage of non-planar surfaces. This conductive layer sticks well to both silicon dioxide and tungsten. It ensures the hard to reach corners will be filled so a solid electrical connection can be made. It also prevents any unwanted reactions between silicon and the metal layers. Using chemical vapor deposition, tungsten is then deposited. As the contact holes fill, there is a danger of creating a void if the top edges fill in before the center. This can be seen in this SEM photograph. Tungsten hexafluoride is combined with hydrogen to deposit a highly conformal layer which fills the contact holes evenly from all sides. The tungsten is then etched to leave metal plugs. From this target, aluminum alloy is sputtered onto the planar surface to become the first level of circuit wiring. The next photolithography step etches the aluminum. This creates the first metal level connecting individual transistors. Today's complex integrated circuits require two to six levels of metallization in order to appropriately route data lines, power, clocks, and control lines. Once aluminum has been deposited, temperature becomes an issue. The previous method of depositing silicon nitride at 780 degrees is now too high for aluminum. A low pressure plasma enhanced process known as PECVD uses radio frequency to drive the chemical reaction. This reduces the amount of thermal energy needed. Through this porthole, we can see the plasma that breaks the reactant bonds. The atoms, or molecular fragments, form new bonds to create silicon nitride. PECVD deposition, coupled with planarization techniques, make multiple layers of metallization possible. Additional layers are made by patterning and etching contact holes and filling them with metal to recreate a planar surface. This allows another layer of metal to be deposited and patterned. As the number of metal layers continues to grow, with the projection of up to 14 layers, new types of materials are being researched and introduced. While most of today's chips are produced with aluminum, Cutting-edge research and technology are leading toward the use of copper. This system, about to be shipped to a customer, is supplied with both copper and tantalum targets. To accommodate copper, research is looking at new insulating materials with lower dielectric constants. Some of these materials are polymer-based. Some use carbon. Some are even incorporating the very air we breathe. <laughs>